And you know, friends, I want to stop here just for a moment. Why Obama sent troops to Africa? I'm going to tell you why. The resistance army has murdered, abducted, or mutilated scores of thousands, especially children. Oh, my heart hurts. And India reels from new terror attack. And of course, that is in New Delhi. You know, friends, uh, the first number one reason they said we're in serious trouble here, and that was Brian Kennedy's article. He said, because people think that Islam is a religion of peace. It really doesn't sound like that around the world, Jack. Well, I found out that there are five different denominations within Islam, and if you want peace, you go to the Sufis. In fact, right now, they're trying to push the elections in Egypt toward the Sufis all coming out to vote because they are the peaceful, loving people of Islam. The rest, you've got the Wahhabites, and that was Al-Qaeda, and he so hated even the Shiites and Sunnis that he said, I'd like to have them all killed because they're not true to Islam, the faith of our fathers. And recently in Bahrain, the Sunnis took bulldozers and crushed and smashed every mosque the Shiites had. Both mosques to Allah worshiping there. God help us. There's no end to it. That's not enough. Assad of Syria has the Allah leading, and they are as bad as the Shiites. And this man, according to McCain, is one of the biggest brutes in the country. But when Rick Warren was there, and you preachers who are following him, listen carefully. He got up there and said, this is the greatest leader in the Middle East. Well, we've just shown that Gaddafi and this guy in Syria are just as bad. Assad is dangerous, and he just mowed down 3,000 of his people who were doing nothing but protesting in the streets. They had no weapons or anything else to kill. We could go on and on. And then there is this new one, El Sabab murdering two million people in Africa, now moving into Kenya, as we said last week. Oh, God help us. This spring uprising, killing one another, Muslims killing Muslims, doesn't matter. Do they get 72 virgins apiece when they kill their own people? It is not a religion of love or peace, but praise God, Christianity is. Jesus preached to a great multitude, said, in John 13, 35, by this shall all men know you are my disciples because you have love one for another. Again, in Matthew 19, 19, he said, love your neighbor as yourself. And said it again in chapter 22, verse 39. In Mark chapter 12, verses 31 and 33. In Luke 10, 27. But this is really shocking. He said in Luke 6, 27 and 28, love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. Wow, is that ever different from Islam and the spring uprising that Ahmadinejad is bragging about where they're killing one another by the thousands in five or six of the lands right now, and it isn't over yet. And then he's also the Prince of Peace. Now listen to this in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Unto us a child is born, virgin birth. Unto us a son is given. That's when he returns and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and of the increase of his government and of peace, hallelujah, there shall be no end. And our Jesus is coming back to earth soon. It's pictured in Revelation 19, verse 11, when he comes regally and majestically on that white horse, and he comes as the King of kings and Lord of lords, verse 16, to rule and reign for a thousand years, and after he's recommissioned in 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28, it's again mentioned, in Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, the kingdoms of this world, so it's on earth, have become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and forever. And verse 18 says, he puts a stop to those who are destroying one another and destroying the earth. World war ends forever unto the Lord Jesus Christ. And once he's sitting on that throne of David in Luke 1, 32 and 33, it's a world of peace. And oh, here's what happens at that time. There'll be one great prayer meeting then, but guess who's in charge? Philippians 2, 10, 11, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, and that's forever and forever. Oh, come quickly, Jesus, and bring your peace with you. 
Oh, yes, one day we're going to have peace on earth, only because the Lord brings it. Well, going on with that article by Brian Kennedy, remember he named a couple of other countries very significant right now, and that has to do with Russia, the Cold War is over, and China. Well, look at this. Army phone links China and Russia. Again, Russia, China to hold joint military exercises. Russia, China stage war games in Central Asia. Russia launches arms race with new intercontinental ballistic missile. The growing threat from China's Air Force and China naval power draws U.S. notice. How many nukes does China have? Very good question. And the Israeli Defense Force holds large drill near Dimona nuclear reactor in southern Israel. They say we must protect that, especially because of what we have there, that nuclear reactor. Now, you remember in Brian Kennedy's article, he named Russia and China all safe with them. How about it, Jack? It doesn't look very safe Baloney. to me. Baloney. Now, first of all, let me say this. There will be three invasions in the Armageddon campaign, Revelation 16, 16. And the first is when Russia moves down with her armies. And that is Ezekiel 38, verses 1, 2. And it's under the terms God, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Rosh, cities in Russia now who fight the war the latter years and the latter days, verses 8 and 16. Well, joining with them is an Arab group of Muslim nations in Daniel 11:40, Isaiah 17, 1, Ezekiel 38, verses 5 to 7, and Psalm 83, verses 5 to 7. And other parts of the world of Muslims come to join with them from Algiers and it's going to be a holocaust as all nations eventually come against Israel, Zechariah 14, 2. Well, now the first phase has failed, so it's time for China to move in. And isn't it strange that Russia just signed an agreement with China to work together and they call it Eurasia, the Oriental nations with Russia. And that's Daniel 11:44. Now, as they come, from the east, many of them, not just one, but the kings of the sun rising, Revelation 16, 12, they fight the most horrendous battle in history with atomic weaponry, and that, of course, is also Revelation 9, 14, 18. And they are defeated. Oh, it's going to be bedlam, believe me. Now, after China and Russia are all through, and it takes seven months to bury them, all the corpse and those who've died, all nations come against Jerusalem, Zechariah 14, 2, as I've already said. And at that moment, our Messiah appears in verse 4 of Zechariah 14. He defeats the armies of the world, verse 12, and they have peace from then on under the Prince of Peace, as I said earlier in this program, Isaiah 9, 6. You know, Jack, I love something. We can look forward to the Prince of Peace coming to this earth and really bringing peace but you can have peace right now in your heart. As you look around, do you have peace? I want you to know that Jesus wants to be your Savior. And when he comes in, he comes in, forgives our sin, and he brings peace. Oh, Jack, will you give the invitation so that those not ready will be ready? Oh, it's a war-weary world. But Jesus said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace. I give unto you, let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And you can have that peace right now through Jesus. Look at me and pray this. He made peace through the blood of his cross. Lord Jesus, I'm fearful for what's coming, but I'm asking you now to come into my heart. You, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, come in as my Savior. I receive what you did for me on the cross to wash away my sins. Jesus, save me now. In your holy name I pray this. Amen. Friends, at this very special time of the year, Christmas. Oh, I love Christmas. And then going into the new year, what a beautiful time it is to open one's heart to the Lord. Now, we presented this program to you because it was one of our most requested programs. And we wanted to give it to you at this special time of the year so that you might open your heart to the Lord and see the value of everything we've been trying to bring you into your home. So write to me. If you prayed that prayer with Jack, I'll send you this little book of first steps in a new direction. I always say it. We want to start 
this year with the Lord also. And uh, we are also going to be saying you can order the Bible here. Take another look at our preview, please. Presenting the third edition of the Jack Vanopy Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Vanopy Ministries. Dr. Vanopy has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Vanopy Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Vanopy used to categorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Vanapi, Your Future, an A to Z Index to Prophecy, Revelation Revealed, Verse by Verse, and Daniel Final End Time Mysteries Unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. Well, you know, if Jack were talking right now, he'd say, take your Christmas tie back and order the Bible. Amen. <laughs> but what a wonderful, wonderful gift this would be for a birthday or for anything coming up in the new year. You know, friends, I, I said this before. This is the greatest thing I think Jack has ever done. There are three books in here included with your order. It's a bonus. So do make the call. There's the 800 number. There is the address, and we will get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. You. So, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive this wonderful offer once again. Chuck? To order your Prophecy Bible, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Ellis. Thank you so very much, Chuck. And we got a great announcer, don't we? Happy New Year, Chuck, to you and your family. And Happy New Year to all of you, too. It's coming up right away. Well, here's the number. Make the call. There's the address. We want to get this in the mail because you need to share it with others in the New Year. One of Jack's greatest, greatest things he's ever done. So make the call. We'll get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Let me leave you with this great, great thought for the New Year. Live as if Christ died yesterday. He rose this morning. Whoa, and he's coming back today. What an incentive to be living for him. We'll look forward to being your home again next week. Until then, remember, Christ loves you and so do we. So very, very much. God bless you. Bye-bye.